So we're at the prime focus of our solar telescope now, and what we see is a white light image of the disk of the sun. On the disk today, we see several active regions, several sunspots. Each active region is perhaps five or 10 times the size of planet Earth. So that's a huge sunspot that we have here. Absolutely massive. Were you able to measure the magnetic field and the smaller things as well? The reason Matt and his team study these beautiful shapes so carefully is because hidden within sunspots is an unsettling truth. Sunspots can cause the biggest and most damaging space storms, solar storms that occur. They follow sunspots as they travel across the face of the sun. And that's bigger than the Earth there, right? It's say eight to nine times the diameter of Earth, so it's a massive region. Just waiting for them to explode. That's a huge storm coming in. It is. It's like looking down the barrel of a loaded gun. Sunspots are kind of like thunderstorms on the Earth. A big sunspot can cause a big storm, um, just like a big thunderhead can cause a big tornado on the Earth. Now, we can't exactly predict when tornadoes will occur and which thunderstorms will produce tornadoes. Just like on the sun, we can't predict exactly which sunspots will spawn solar storms, but that's one of the main focuses of our research. Professor Carrie Forrest is at the forefront of research into the hidden world of chaos and violence inside our nearest star. He and his team have built a daring experiment to study a star inside this building. So when we began this business, we built this crazy looking device to figure out where space weather comes from. Inside it, they will generate the dynamics of a star. If you want to understand space weather, ultimately you have to understand the engine that creates some very intense, powerful magnetic fields from a complex flow of um, turbulent flow of plasma inside the sun. This superheated plasma churns ceaselessly as the sun rotates. We have this device which is supposed to mimic those processes here on Earth. But this is a dangerous experiment. They need to fill it with an explosive element. So here we have a pressure vessel that holds inside of it flowing liquid sodium, which is a very dangerous, complex liquid to work with. Let me show you the inside. Watch your, watch your fingers. All right, that's great. So looking inside here, you can see we have these two, um, these two propellers. One spins this direction, the other one spins in the opposite direction. And um, we create these flows that are out along the poles and they're spinning in opposite directions. And um, it's those flows which can take very small magnetic fields and amplify them up into big, loops of magnetic field that ultimately bubble out and emerge from the surface of the sphere and um, would, would basically be the same sort of process that happens on the sun. He's hoping to generate these. This is the experiment. It's exactly the same as the experiment I showed you earlier, uh, except it's covered with insulation. We have it at very high temperature. Um, these, uh, these pipes coming in bring hot oil to the surface of the experiment to keep it at the 100 degrees Celsius at which sodium uh, melts. And then um, all of the wires going in go to magnetic field sensors that measure the magnetic field that comes out of the vessel. Now they have to pump 300 gallons from an underground storage tank into their sphere. Now open valve three, and open valve two to start the transfer. 
there are many steps to that and many places for things to go wrong. So we're completely on edge as we're trying to get the sodium up into the vessel. Check the temperature transfer line. There's enough potential chemical energy in this volume of sodium to blow this building to smithereens. I will reset the offset of the amplifiers and then we are good to go. When we do the experiment itself, we're going to leave this room, go to the remote control room, and do the experiments from outside the room so we're completely safe. Can we go ahead and turn things on here? Yeah. Yep. Right now we're at 100 RPM, and um, what you see here is a very weak magnetic field generated deep inside the experiment. At low speeds, this experiment creates a magnetic field a bit like the Earth's. But as you increase the speed, the dynamics of the experiment change. At maximum speed, it starts behaving like a star. We're gonna change the motor speed and really increase the drive of the generator. And so the next thing here is to is to look and see what changes when we make that change in speed. We're going up to 1400 RPM. We're really pushing the limit of the experiment here. It gets hot, the power levels are high, it's about as fast as the propellers can go. And we are there. Okay, yep. we are, wow. we're up to that. speed. Yep. This is amazing. So, wow, so you can see the turbulence levels are coming way up. Carey's discovered that magnetic power doesn't just rise gently with motor speed, it takes a massive leap. These are flux loops that are popping out of the surface of the sphere. They're very noisy, very chaotic, much like the surface of the sun would be. This gives you a sense of what's happening inside our nearest star, the process that gives space weather its teeth. So just imagine what would happen if we took this experiment, which is really small, and uh, we increased its size to something like the surface of the sun, and we increased its engine to the power of the thermonuclear engine of the core of the, the sun, and what would be generated. Well, those are really astronomically big numbers that we would be talking about. The power that can be generated in the, uh, in the magnetic field on the surface of the sun then is really enormous, and you can see why space weather is really a scary thing. Ultimately, this magnetic energy has to find a way out. Sunspots are one way that twisted magnetic energy finds its way to the surface of the sun. But why do some sunspots then explode, releasing a storm that can threaten our way of life?